Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a special guest here and this is Jonathan. I'm sure you guys know who he is. Jonathan is pretty inspirational. I'm so excited to have him on my channel and talk about beauty, gender norms, whatever we want to talk about and just have a good time. My God, let's talk! So I'm not a super expert about clean beauty, but I'm definitely interested in learning. I know that I, do, I don't like a lot of synthetic fragrance. I don't love sulfates in my cleansers, but other than that, like, what is like clean beauty? And like... Honey, you need to become a journalist. You're like slaying it with these questions. <laughs> Someone get you a job on like the Today Show yesterday. Okay, here's the thing. In the US, United States of America, you know, she's a very gorgeous place. Unlike like Japan and Canada and the in European Union, which are also very stunning, gorgeous places, they have a lot more regulations when it comes to like personal care products. Mm -hmm. So there's like a lot more ingredients that would be on like a banned list that like aren't able to be used in personal care products. Whereas in the United States, we haven't passed any new laws around personal care products and regulations of what goes into personal care products mm -hmm. since 1938. So like literally when you think about like the cast of Downton Abbey, if that were a real situation, honey, they were like still thriving and going through an economic depression the last time we passed any new laws mm -hmm. about personal care products. Can you imagine? That's like your great, 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 great grandma. I can't imagine. I know. <laughs> we need to be more concerned about what clean beauty is and like how it pertains to us, especially in the United States, because we have, there's so little oversight and the ingredients are allowed to be used in products. Mm -hmm. Clean beauty is something that is great for you and like works, you know, it, it works, but it's also great for the environment and like is, doesn't increase a carbon footprint on, the, on mm. the earth. So a little bit more, I guess, responsible. Yeah, just like being conscientious of like, where the ingredients are sourced from, mm -hmm. if the people who are sourcing these ingredients are, are being paid, paid, paid yeah. fairly, um, if the ingredients in the products are sustainable, mm -hmm. is the packaging yeah. made from recycled material, mm -hmm. is it recyclable? Those are all things that like go into like a clean beauty conversation. Is clean beauty accessible for everybody? Well, I think that like access to education and information is like a really important part of like someone's ability to access information mm -hmm. around you know clean beauty. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that clean beauty is absolutely for everyone, but you have to be able to know where the information is to be able to empower yourself with that education to seek clean beauty options out in your life. Mm -hmm. So clean beauty absolutely is for everyone. And actually there is like so many like DIY um, things that you can do that are like really low cost mm -hmm. from like, you know, using agave nectar as like a conditioner for your hair and, mm -hmm. as, a and as like a facial mask. Mm -hmm. You can use like full yes. fat whipped cream as like a moisturizing treatment on your, on your um, yeah. hair. There is like, there's so like many like, oil. yeah, like, yeah, to like, to kind of, in, to help promote hair growth. Mm -hmm. So there's like so many different like natural things that are like non-toxic to us. They're great for the environment. And mm -hmm. if you were talking about like a castor oil thing, like depending on where you purchase that castor oil, if it was from like a local farmer market, like you could be helping to empower like locally Local. sourced products yeah. to bring it back to like equality, especially, you know, for genders, mm -hmm. being able to empower entrepreneurs and creators um, in local economies is a really great way to help empower women mm -hmm. and to um, empower people that are on the forefront of making uh, clean and non-toxic beauty something that people want to buy. Yeah. For people that want to learn more about ingredients and stuff, like Clean Academy is a great resource to go there. Look for info, like sort of just educate yourself, I think. Being an educated customer is very important. Yes! And, like you need to yes. know where your stuff comes from. Especially and, in this American way that we, you know, regulate our personal yeah. care products. Honey, it's all on you to have the information. And yes, about seeking yeah. information and clean beauty being for everyone. That is what Clean Academy is. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. We are connecting dots. We mm -hmm. are playing tic-tac-toe. We are playing connect four. We are making it work. I don't know any of those. Guys. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> I was like, really? I was like, should they not have Connect Four? You were like, it's such a fun little game. You know, you get like the, the like the black ones and the red ones. You gotta be like, what the hell is this? I should never play Connect. It's really fun. I play Tic Tac Toe. Yeah, I love Tic Tac Toe as well. <laughs> Simple question: What does beauty mean to you? Gorgeous question, and for such a short one and a simple one, it has such a long. And you could really, we could talk about this for like seventeen thousand mm -hmm. hours. For me, I feel like. Beauty is more about how I feel on the inside than about how I look on the outside. Beauty, for the way I think about it, is is more about um, making 
myself feel seen and whole and authentic to myself mm -hmm. than for like the validation of other people. Not that I don't like attention, because we do like we attention. We love compliments. We love a little compliments, but I dress in myself like for myself. It's not like to fulfill other people's expectations, mm -hmm. although I think that that, you know, can play a role, but it's like not the central role. How did you come to that space and like mindset of like not pleasing other people? Because that kind of yeah, yeah. difficult. Like, uh, well, <laughs> um, <laughs> like a soul crushing amount of rejection, to be honest. Mm -hmm. For such a long time, I was trying to kind of conform and be what I thought people wanted me to be. And um, which was never what they wanted. And so I think once I stopped trying to satisfy other people's expectations of me, then um, it became easier to really focus on what made me happy and what me, made me feel beautiful. But also, you know, I think that the, the, the relationship that we all have with beauty is like ever evolving, um, but there are still days where I feel like less confident than others. Mm -hmm. I think you're doing amazing. And Thanks. I think just with the social media in general, I think one of your accounts, uh, Along with Ai Wei, I think, it's one we of the- I love Ai Wei. I, I think those help me. And I'm sure help like thousands of people a lot. So I want to say like, it's great to see, see that part of social media. Cause social media can be a lot and there's just so much on there. I feel like you're really slaying. I feel like you're like a little, like you're a freaking like hero of like gorgeous youth beauty culture. I'm okay, I try. No, like, you're really, really slaying try. so hard. Your energy's oh, like absolutely you. beautiful. Thank you. It took me a lot of work to also get to this space of you know, taking up space, being seen, um, being appreciated, because uh, the comments on social media with a guy in beauty can be kind of brutal sometimes. And oftentimes I try not to look at a comment. Yeah, these comments, we gotta not, we don't, we don't have space. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to remember like the order of my skincare, how to talk about registering to vote to people and stuff. So I really don't have time to be looking at you know, comments, but I do kind of slip into looking at them sometimes. Yeah. It's a slipper. Do you ever slippy slip and you kind yeah, of look a little tiny? Yeah, it's like 3 a.m. Yeah, me too, me too. scrolling, but I'll definitely be more aware and then try not to do Well, you know, self-awareness is the first step. Mm -hmm. We're really getting there. So what are your thoughts on sort of like gender norms in the space and in beauty in general? Do you think there's more work to be Done to just no, do I think there's work. complete uh, equality between sexes. I think all the work has been completely done. I think everything's totally fine. Uh, I think that the gender norms in, in the beauty space are great. I think that you know cisgendered men are having a great time wearing makeup and you know really expressing their femininity in a safe space. I'm kidding. There's so much more work to be done yeah. when it comes to a gender norm um, and equality space. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's really in such an intersectional way because until you know. The gender binary on it, on the whole is kind of one thing I learned from this incredible activist named Alok, and uh, they were telling me just about how you know the construct of gender is like a much newer mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. in history than like you know a third gender or a gender non-binary person. Really, the construct of gender as we know it is something that Very was like in, yes, it was yeah. like more introduced in like like medieval mid like European times or something. Yeah. I mean, and I just. Yeah, so we got to like really, I think, really break out of all of that so much more to, to achieve that gorgeous equality that we're looking yeah. for. Even where I'm from in Malaysia, like a lot of indigenous tribes, like they have not even like their gender, but sort of not even expressing gender or not even feeling like they are the third gender, they just, they just are. It was definitely part of a newer thing that was introduced with marriage and good conventional. I wish I had the vocabulary to sort of explain what I'm feeling. You know, there's a relationship between like gender and power, mm -hmm. in the way that it's been classically set up because, you know, classically like gender has been used as a way, as something for like men to control mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm which is, you know, in their bodies and like what people do with their bodies. But when it comes to like makeup and exploring femininity and exploring like it being safe or not for like cisgendered men to explore their femininity, I think in that sense, we have so much more work to be done. I mean, I think that there's so much like casual bullying and name calling yeah. and um, fun that is made of men that do want to explore their yeah. femininity. I feel like femininity has always been equated with less than, so when, a man wants to express himself a little bit more feminine, it's always like frowned upon. And I, I don't know, I just feel like it's really difficult to be feminine in any sense of the word. Like for me personally, uh, growing up, it, it has been really hard to want to express myself that way. And I see the women in my life and um, the way that they've been treated just, to, just for existing. They have to put in so much more effort 
and I don't know, it's just really difficult for me to like see it constantly. And that's why like, I would love to see more change in terms of people embracing women and uplifting women and uplifting people that show more feminine qualities, mm -hmm. for sure. I think when people add, talk about diversity and inclusivity too, you have to be an educated consumer yourself and then advocate for brands and people that you want to follow because traditionally I feel like we were always fed information and fed things because there's so little transparency with products. L even learning how to read like a label for ingredients or a nutrition label, like people need to know what they're putting in their body and putting onto their face. With all of us being educated, I think things can change but it starts with you and us and obviously but with you. Because when you buy stuff that is toxic, it like tells brands that like people don't mind yeah, to like interact okay. with toxic chemicals. And these chemicals like really have like a whole host of dangers and risks and concerns, which are all things that you can learn about in yeah. kind of a fun way at Clean Academy because like I'll be there and our friends will be there that are like kind of fun. Yeah. And you know, it's, it doesn't have to be such a like, meh, meh. Yeah. like it's fun to learn about clean beauty. It yeah. seriously is like, I'm there Queens, mm -hmm. like click the link or swipe up or it's like down here. Like wait, like earlier I went to Sephora and- was You were minding your own business, honey. <laughs> yeah. You went to Sephora. I went shopping to find some clean beauty products. The ones that have the tag. I love finding a little seal. Yeah, that little green seal. Yeah. And that's what I I, I guess was drawn to in terms of finding clean beauty. So so anyway, take me back. So if okay. you have a trillo, Golden Girls, you haven't seen it, but it's on Hulu. You should watch everything. It's so good. It's such a classic. Golden Girls? Yeah. Okay. So you're minding your own business. You go to Sephora. You couldn't navigate, honey, but you see these green labels. Yeah. Yes. And I picked up some products just to play <gasps> around and just, you know. So is that is that who it is? It's like Bite. Bite. Yeah. I always just like don't see the eye and it just looks like BTE to I me. I think it's great. But it's it like to have like a multi-stick. I love multi-stick. Like, use it on your eyes, lips, yes. cheeks, yes. anywhere you want. I got this Ilia concealer. It's an aloe vera based concealer, <gasps> which I haven't really seen. Oh my so. God, let's draw a happy face so, on my hand with so it. So it's like a... And play with the texture. Wow. I really it's like smelling. the consistency of this aloe in my life. Yeah, so I have not seen a concealer with an aloe base. Yes, I aloe. Like... Oh, she smells gorgeous. Okay, wait, can you zoom in on this shit? Because look, this is what happens when you be when you put some makeup on your shit without moisturizing at first, but this is some other stuff with Biosense. I wasn't even trying to do a hip tip, but since we're here, let's do it. Give me some of that squalane oil, honey, and put it on top of this, because if you ever get some busted makeup that's just like sitting on top of your, not that that was busted, I'm sure it was great, but I just didn't prep my skin first. But I just, but just and now watch. So, watch her go from chalky to something that rhymes with chalky that is a fun alliteration that is blended. Yeah. <laughs> Watch, it's like literally gonna like rub into my hand like really pretty now. And it's gonna look super dewy. <laughs> and now I'm giving you coverage, but I'm also giving you moisturization. Shine, dewy. And now you can really see uh, that squalene makes any nasty foundation sit into your hand. Yeah. Now that that's then, nasty, but like we have to prep our hands before you put foundation on. And it oh just gosh. blends so nicely. Doesn't it? Okay, now you're gonna just see your rose vegan lip balm, yes. which you could also use as a brow gel. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. That's smart. I never thought about it. I that. also use the cuticle cream sometimes. <gasps> That's so smart. Yeah. So you can, like, a lot of them are like multi purpose products. I feel yeah, like. I love a multi purpose like, product. Yeah, you can just like throw it in your bag and then use whatever. This one, I feel like you can use it all over and also mix it with foundation. Also, as a night oil. Yeah. I want to know what your like self care routine is just to take care of your mind. And because you're obviously a busy, busy person and you have so much going on, what do you do to take care of? Okay. Well, one thing I do every day is I, um, in the morning I meditate and sometimes it's like as small as three minutes. Um, the most time I ever do is like seven, but that's like really powerfully healing to your brain. And it also, just when someone really just is on my last fucking nerve, mm -hmm. that meditation really comes in handy. You know, so I don't go off. <laughs> and I can tell when I haven't been meditating because I go off on people more. Mm. Meditation is great. Yeah. You know, it helps us regulate yeah. our emotions. The other thing I do is I really seek out things that make me joyful, which in the last like year, two years, um, since I realized that like if I broke my wrist doing gymnastics, like I didn't have to do hair anymore to like raise my cats. Like I could do my podcast and like, do, do other, other things. things. Yeah. So then I was like, oh my gosh, I can like do gymnastics again. I can learn how to figure skate. So like doing gymnastics and figure skating are like two things that are like just like purely joyful, yeah. like purely for fun. Those are all things that I think just when they when you do things that bring you joy, um, I think it's like really good for your self-care. I feel like I never 
Well, I, I haven't been able, I, not to say I haven't been able, but I haven't had, took out the time for myself to do th something that truly just makes me happy versus having a return, like in terms of like my career. So what's your figure skating? I think hiking. Really? Yeah. When you were little, you wanted to grow up and be a hiker? Not no. to diminish your childhood dreams, but like... <laughs> <laughs> painting. Oh my God, you wanted to be a painter? Yeah, I really you need to, to go to those classes where like someone's naked and you paint them with the other people, but it's not sexual because it's like art. Yeah. <laughs> no, they do that in Los Feliz, like right over here, girl. You can go paint naked people. I really want to paint. Or with, like, like other ceramics. people who are like old. And you feel really mature. Wine and painting, maybe something like that. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't even done that at all. So <sighs> that would be great. Is that your next video series? Maybe, yeah, a hour long painting session with. You Ivan. better tag me for inspo. I will. <laughs> well, Cute you. hashtag Thank producer. You for, thanks for sharing that. Yes, my pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for asking. You're so sweet. We love you. I feel so rested. That, like you're our future. Oh. Yes, <laughs> you're just nailing it. Oh, thank you. Yay. I, honestly, I wish that um, I could have watched you while I was drunk growing up. I think that would have been like a lot for me. Like, sweet, that's yeah. so sweet of you to say. But I'm so happy that you are visible and authentic and gorgeous and proud and like oh. disseminating your brand to kids. Love what you're doing. Oh, I'm so you. inspired by you and you are just an incredible talent. So like keep doing you. Thank you. Yes. Oh. Love. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's real hard. <laughs> Cause sometimes I don't know who to um look up look to um going forward in life in general. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like really sweet queen. Love you. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Jonathan, for being with me and talking to us about everything in general and just being you. It was my pleasure. Thank you so thank much for having me. Thank you so much for oh, being you. You're such you. an inspiration. You're so oh. amazing. Keep on slaying, queen. Thank you. Oh. But where do people need to go and it, see stuff about the beauty? You guys have to go check out Biasan's YouTube channel with Clean Academy. They have a bunch of videos on there. And leave your questions for them because they want to sort of make content that you're curious about. So if you want to learn about anything, please go to their page. And Jonathan will be yes. there. And they'll be talking a bunch about beauty and clean beauty. So. Don't forget to check it out. YouTube Biosense channel, yes! Uh, do you watch Veep? Veep? Veep with Julia no. Louis-Dreyfus. I have not watched This Veep. is Julia Louis-Dreyfus' Veep, and this is her <laughs> as Elaine in Seinfeld. Oh, that's cute. Yeah.